Here we are in Santa Cruz. So Devin, pan out so you can see. If you can you see, look at your dad down there. Can you look at Roger down there on the beach all by himself doing his Tai Chi? So D Roger's down there. The girls are up. Oh, look at. Can you see them over? Over here. Look they're out this over window. There. They're they're definitely right there. No, they're laying down over here. See them? They're right there laying down. Can yes. I right there you guys can see see those two laying on the sand there okay zoom out that's gracie and her girlfriend hannah who came so we pretty much kind of have the beach almost to ourselves it's kind of exciting the, um so we're in this tiny little bungalow it's like maybe 600 square feet um so the kids are literally like on top of each other here um okay nice continue oh gosh Devin is having a hard time staying awake to video this, um, but he drew the short straw, so he's got to be the videographer. So please bear with him. He's um, he's 17 now, and you know he needs a lot of sleep to sleep off whatever he might have done at his birthday party. So, anyways, okay. Hey, Mary Lou. Hey, Katrina. Um, hi, Season. Darlene. Linda. Um, Season, the view is amazing. Like you can hear the ocean lapping up. It's kind of exciting. Mary Lou says, happy birthday, Devin. I think he's almost asleep, Mary Lou. Um, hi, Shirley. Hi, Paulette. Okay, so um, we did not really get too far, um, too ready for you girls today because we kind of were lazy and slept in. Um, so we had a wild night tracking Devin down on his birthday. So. So we didn't get much sleep, so we kind of recovered this morning. So I have laid out all of my projects. So if any of you have gone on a retreat, you know how when you go on a UFO retreat, you bring 28 projects because you think you're going to get everything done. So I have brought probably 28 projects. So I'm kind of laying it out here. Um, sh show them, Devin. So I've got projects upon projects. For those of you who have the thread stand that we had, I just want to show you how compact and uh, versatile it is for traveling. So I haven't put it together yet, so I'm actually going to demo a little bit of thread painting, just a little bit, um, on the machine without the thread stand because I haven't put it together yet, even though it takes 30 seconds. But I wanted to show you what it looks like all compact. So all of our little things are right here. We could have Devin put it together, and they, you could see, see how it. easy yeah, it is. Can see it tomorrow. Oh, Devin says you can oh. see it tomorrow. Oh, okay, so then we brought several projects I'm hoping to be able to demo throughout the week. Um, we have um, Steam Seam 2 Okay, here. just show what you're doing today. No, I'm going to show them every... Look at, look at the table. Okay, then record yourself. No, look at it. You said not long. Okay, it's not going to be long, like 15 minutes. You can handle 15 minutes. It's already almost been 15 minutes. Okay, so here we have a, sam a new sample. So a lot of you bought this fabric already. But it's been sitting up at my house waiting for me to get to it. So you know how that goes. Another unfinished project. Oh. So here is the fabric line for um, in the beginning. And this is the quilt that we're going to make. So maybe I can get Devin to trace out the cats and get those ironed on while I stitch the background. Devin could hardly wait. And then we have Chenille It. I know girls, I'm gonna be busy all weekend. So here is the jacket that I had talked about at one point. So hopefully we can get this made in this pretty blue color because then it will remind me of my trip to Santa Cruz. And then we started Lorraine Turner's cat project. So here is, I know it's so hard to keep things organized when you're working on a million projects at once. So here's my kitty cats. The coll fabric collage is done. So I need to do their eyes and I need to do um, add this chenille, which is going to look like this. Hopefully. Hopefully it's going to look like that. Don't hold your breath because <coughs> I'm not so, so great with eyes. But we'll have a good time playing with that. And then, of course, I've got the um, Christy. Is Christy on? Um, I've got the Barbara Pershing um, Bliss pattern. But I did totally cheat. Um, I demoed a little while ago on the um, the actual um, tracing on fusible, 
But um, I know that I'll never get it done, so I had Barbara send me the laser cut. So it shouldn't take too long. Even Devin could do this. We might video him doing mm. it. What? You can't help your mom Let's out? Go. Okay. And then we have, I know, so many projects, girls, but I have five days. So then we have these. I've already traced them onto the steam seam to do the birds onto wool. And I think what I'm going to do so that I'm going to trace them onto wool and get them ready so that in Applique Club we can demo all these different stitches of Sue Spargo. So I'm going to do the birds. And I think what I'm going to do so I don't have to um, use uh, uh, interface, not interface sync, stabilizer, I think I'm going to use um, upholstery fabric. So I'm going to put the birds onto all these upholstery fabrics. And then I've got some felted wool that I got from Grandma Catherine. So I'm going to use this. And Devin, if he was good, would be reading me the comments. And then another, pro like, just two more projects, girls. Well, except for I've got a bunch of bookkeeping and all that to do, too. But in this bag, I have a chicken thigh. You showed that already. I did win. And a chicken body. Look, it's going to go like this. And a chicken foot. So the foot gets sewn on. Oh, oh I think the there's another the leg. leg. Oh, my God. I think there's another leg that goes on to that. No way. And then way. we've got a wing. We've okay. got, oh, here's the leg. They get it. It's a chicken. It's a chicken. They get it. So we've got to put this all together. It's got a really fun tail. Here's part of the tail wings. They it, okay. It, that it's a chicken. Okay, so we've got that to work on. And let's see. Have you guys been inspired <coughs> yet? Devin is not reading any comments. Um, oh my how Karen, how come you don't have any electricity? Hi Anna. Um, why isn't there electricity in Castor Valley? Our brother-in-law who lives in San Leandro, he actually told us to bring candles because PG and E warned that they were going to be turning off power because of the high winds or something. Um, gosh, hi Joanne, hi Louise, hi Michelle, um, hi Candy, Mary Lou. The chicken is super cute. Um, thank you, Pam. Look at for those who just joined us. The look at the view out our window. Well, they might have just joined us. And if you look really closely, okay, there's they, Roger they, they, doing they, they, his they, they, chai tea. They, 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 chai chai tea is Tai Chi. Um, we'd love to see you beat Devin with the chicken leg. Oh God, season, he's already in enough counseling. He does not need to be beat with a chicken leg. It would just give him lots more fun things to talk about. And then I did bring, cause I'm gonna have so much time. Who needs to go outside and enjoy the scenery? Um, I brought this to do some more thread painting. So. If I get to it, I will do demos along the way, quick little demos so you guys can see what's going on. And then um, we're going to tour the Winchester Mystery House. They're not open today, but Gracie's already looked it up. She wants to go um, for Halloween. They have a haunted tour of the Winchester Mystery House. Okay, so I've got these, um, the trees that we've been kind of showing for the last forever because we really don't get projects done. I know a few of you can relate and a few of you cannot relate. Um, but so what I've done here is the machine embroidery stitches with all different threads. So I experimented, this is like a, a 50 weight thread. This is a 12 weight wool. Um, this is a variegated 12 weight cotton. This is just a trim that I just, um, tacked on or oh gosh now I can't even think of the word um anyways um and then here look at this this is um wool 12 weight that I did a feather stitch on the machine with and then here's another one that's a metallic that I just this is a heavyweight thread that I just tacked on with my machine and then I did free motion stitching here on the tree and added beads. So each one of these I'm kind of doing differently. Um, 
but a lot of handwork. Here's one of my favorites. I used a metallic thread in the snow, and then I did French knots. Um, so that just gives you kind of an idea of how you can go crazy and embellish this. On this, the pine needles, I used a 12 weight thread to sew all the pine needles, and then the um, tree branch I did by machine. So I'm just gonna demo because um, I kind of screwed this one up, but never fear, even if you screw it up, you can fix it. So this one, I just started doing the embroidery, all the French knots, but I forgot to stitch the tree. So I'm gonna go in now and stitch the tree and try not to wreck any of my French knots. So that's your demo for today, is the machine stitching. And then we will, Devin's so glad he gets to sit down because he's so exhausted. Um, yes, Candy, we're on vacation. We'll be back in the shop next Monday. Um, so I'll be gone all week. You can bring your elephant next Monday. Um, Katrina, there's no stabilizer because I treated it with Tyrael Magic. So you can see. You, you can't feel it, but you can kind of see it's a little bit stiff. Well, it's very stiff. So if you treat your fabric with the Tyrael Magic, you don't have to use a stabilizer. So the, I pre-treat all of my, like the Bliss, the Bliss project that you're, um, I'm shipping to you, that has, um, mine has Tyrael Magic on it, so I don't have to use a stabilizer. It's a little bit less expensive, and you don't have to, um, you don't have to fight with the stabilizer bending over on itself and getting in your way. So I always like the, um, Tyrael Magic. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom of the tree. And I'm going to detangle my thread here. And hopefully, I just realized, I don't think I brought any extra needles. So hopefully... I do not break this needle. Oh, you know, you always forget something when you go on vacation. Um, okay, so I pulled up my bobbin thread and I just kind of put it to the side. I've got my presser foot down, but I am using an open toe free motion foot. And then I'm just going to, oops, something, something's not happy, something broke. Okay. That's the beauty of doing a live. You never know what's gonna <clears throat> happen. Okay, let's see. Devin, you don't have any comments to read? No. Okay. Um, the, the people renting this cottage, they were worried about bringing sand into the house. Really, they should be worried about the threads will, that they'll find. Okay. Okay, so I always bring up my bobbin thread. Well, not always, but I try to always bring up my bobbin thread so that it doesn't make a nest underneath. Oops, I just soaked through a French knot. Yeah, VRBO. So if you get off the line, girls, don't even worry about it. You're remember, you're just giving the illusion of a tree branch. And I really should have done this before I started. Um, oops. This is why I need my thread stand. Um, I promise on Wednesday or when I do another demo, I'll have the thread stand set up. Um, twin, twin Lakes or Twin Bridges or something. It's, I think it was Twin Lakes, but I'm not really sure why. I don't know. We, we didn't get in last night until about 9 o'clock, so we really haven't toured too much. We decided today is our lazy day. We're just going to hang out here. But it's nice because we've got a barbecue pit and we've got a full kitchen, so we can um, not, so we don't have to go out for every meal. 
So that's kind of nice. Um, okay, so I'm just moving real easy. If I get off the tree branch line, I don't really care. Nobody's going to look. And some of you might prefer gloves when you um, do free motion. I personally don't like gloves. I don't know. It's kind of like I feel hot and sweaty or something. I don't know. I don't like, I feel trapped. So I, I don't typically use gloves. So in a perfect world, I would have done this tree before I started my um, French knots. But honestly, I just picked it up and started sewing. So I don't, um, I forgot to do the tree. I don't know. It's a pretty big part of the project. So I'm not really sure how I forgot to do the tree. But honestly, probably I needed a hand project that was already ready. So I just grabbed this and then realized my predicament and then said, oh, well. So I might, like where I just sewed over my French knots, the brown is a lot darker than the um, peach. So I might have to go back and do some French knots. If it was, if the, if the French knots were darker, then the tree branch, I would just take a Sharpie and fix it, but I might not be able to. But honestly, when you look at it, you'll never see it. Rosie, I had to work today because I didn't want you guys to, um, to say, oh, she's so unpredictable. You just never know when she's gonna do her lives. Okay, so for those of you who are nervous about doing free motion, look at how simple it is. It really is. And I don't have my feed dogs down. Um, I don't ever put my feed dogs down just because I like, it has a little bit more traction for me. Um, but some people love their feed dogs down and if you have a more expensive machine, a newer machine, a lot of times it, if you put on your free motion foot, you're forced to put your feed dogs down. So you just have to deal with whatever your situation is. And I think, so look at Trish's on here. Um, remember on Friday when Trish demoed the coloring and the um, Sashers. So if you guys have any questions for Trish, ask her. Um, yes, Rosie, I did all of the French knots by hand. Can you see the French knots? Can you zoom in on those French knots there? No, maybe they haven't. Mary Lou says, make sure to keep your machine oiled. LOL. She just had that problem. So Mary Lou, I'm going to tell you, on this, on this crappy machine, this Janome, um, the service guy won't even service it, and I have not oiled it in years. Um, I think it's just the lucky machine. Well, it might also be the possessed machine, because sometimes it sews by itself. But it could be that we've jerry-rigged it, like we've got some weird pedal. It's definitely not a Janome pedal that I'm using. So you can go back and forth and stitch this as many times as you want or as thick as you want. So I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to stop and I've got my little scissors on my zinger because this um, machine does not have an auto cut. So you can see with the different weights of threads. So, well, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know what thread I used on that one. Um, let's see. 
I've got some here that I know that I use 12 weight. I should write before I do the demo so you can know. Um, uh, I don't know. I think I used 50 weights on all of these if I had to guess. Nice. Oh, Devin says, nice. Nice demo, Mom. Um, well, here, I'm going to show you the difference. So here on this pumpkin basket, I used a 12 weight. And then I'm sure on these trees here, I used a 50 weight. So you can see the difference in the weights of threads. So the same process of free motion quilting, just the threads, if you use a thicker weight, they do a lot of the work for you. Um, and just so you can see, this is my life, girls. Look at this. I, I, I needed threads, so I grabbed this bag of threads that I take when I teach. But I think the last time I taught this class was at Road to California in January. So I just got this out and look at the mess that's here. So maybe, it's like, look, it's like a little, um, what was, um, it's like a little marionette here. So maybe that's a good job for Devin to clean up. All right, girls. So that's all we have. Oh, we did have a winner. Christy Lee, who was the winner for, um, who was the winner for the quilt? Um, who was the winner for the quilt? We on Instagram we did a drawing and somebody won the Halloween quilt. Um, Karen says she bought it. Uh, you know me, sixty six hundred about three years ago. And when they gave me the in service on it, they said the nice thing about the machine is it never has to be serviced. Just put a little drop of oil every once in a while, which I thought was kind of weird. Well, honestly, I don't think my Bernina needs to be oiled because I never oil that either. And I've never oiled this Janome. And um, it's just kind of a little workhorse that we have at the shop. Um, it was a loaner machine, but now I don't loan them out because see the reverse button? Can you zoom into the reverse button? Overtime or what? Yeah, you're getting overtime. Um, the re somebody borrowed the machine in one of the classes and she pushed the reverse button so hard it's stuck inside there. So when I tried to have it serviced, the guy said that the machine wasn't even worth what the $100 service would be. So, so he didn't service it, and that was probably like eight years ago. And so this machine hasn't been oiled in about eight years. But I don't advise that at home. If you're supposed to oil your machine, oil it. Um, have Plenty 99 is the winner. Um, so, okay. So, Christy, um, if you give me that address for her, then I will have Karen ship it. Poor Karen. I So, I, I worked on Saturday, one, because I was worried about Devin, um, till 1.40 in the morning, getting out everybody's orders. So, everybody's orders have been shipped except for, um, there's there are a few that weren't, we were waiting on more product. So hopefully when we get home, we'll have all that product in stock. Um, okay, so we will see you girls on Wednesday, if not before. Have a good um, day, and hopefully you get a lot of things sewn, a lot of UFOs sewn. All right, bye.